Hi, and welcome everyone to the next event in our webinar series. Uh, today, we're going to look at the newest edition of our spectrometer family, which is our Redstone spectrum, optical spectrum analyzer. My name is Petra Hatke. I, I work with sales and marketing at Tor Labs, and I will be moderating today's event. Uh, today's webinar, um, in, this, in today's webinar, Dr. Carl Borgentun, um, who is part of our optical spectrum analyzer development team here at Tor Labs, will highlight this new multifunctional instrument. It features the different specifications and even give you a demonstrating instrumentation showing the operational setup that shows the functions in real time. If you have any questions, please use the question and answer tool at, during the presentation. If you would like to speak to us about any of our products, maybe have a demo request or any other technical questions, please click on the request now tool. Um, there's also an additional resource tool um, where we have linked information about our Redstone Optical Spectrum Analyzer. And that's the one we are featuring and talking about today. And with this, I would like to hand over to Carl Borgentun. Well, thank you very much, Petra. So I'm Carl, pleased to meet you all. And I'm here to talk about the Redstone Optical Spectrum Analyzer, the OSA 305. It's based on a classical Michelson interferometer design where we have a beam splitter that splits the incoming light into two different optical branches. And one of which has a moving retro reflector so the optical path length can be varied. Uh, in this instrument, the physical translation of that retro reflector is eight centimeters and that translates into 16 centimeters maximum optical path difference. And a high optical path difference means a very high resolution. And this instrument has less than two gigahertz resolution. Uh, the light from the two different branches then recombine at the beam splitter. We detect that light with two different detectors in what we call an interferogram. We then do Fourier transform to convert that into an optical spectrum. Also in this device, we have piezo control for the other retro reflector to optimize the beam overlap for maximum signal. And we also have a frequency locked reference laser that will keep track of the retro reflector as it moves and varies the path length. Every purchase of Redstone OSA includes a high-performance laptop with a GUI already installed. It's user-friendly and full of analysis tools and features. As you can see on the slide deck, the wavelength range there is 1,000 to 5,600 nanometers. And a typical application example would be to characterize a laser or other light source, or for instance, uh, a gas absorption spectroscopy of some kind. In fact, the live experiment that I'll be performing shortly is one of these um, gas absorption spectroscopy. I have built a small setup right in front of the instrument here. Uh, and I will, uh, let's take a, yeah, let's take a closer look at the setup. So the setup looks like this. I have a broadband light source, the SLS202L, to generate white light. I connect it with a cage system to keep everything nice and straight to the compact multibus gas cell. The light bounces back and forth within the cell a couple of times and then exits through the different cage system. And I've got two alignment mirrors in kinematic mounts that guides the light into the OSA through the free space input port. And I also have a red plastic tube going into the gas cell. I can use that to blow carbon dioxide filled air into the gas cell. But before we start experimenting, let me briefly explain uh, some of the specifications and features of the Redstone OSA 305. I've already mentioned the high resolution. In fact, if you compare it to our OSA 20X series, we have four times better resolution with the Redstone OSA. That's the red dashed plot 
in the slide deck to your left, uh, we have uh, four different res resolution modes for the OSA 305, and the highest one is the one at the bottom. And in the slide deck, on the same slide, we have on the right plot, we show the noise floor of all uh, the entire OSA family. We have at Thor Labs. We have five different models for the OSA 200 series, and we have one model in the OSA 300 series. And the one I'm showing you right now is the orange plot in at the very bottom here. So you can see it has a very low noise floor, which is basically a measure of the lowest signal we can detect with the instrument. So no, low noise floor is good. And we also have a very wide noise floor because we have two different detectors which cover different wavelength ranges. And then we stitch the spectra together. Looking at the instrument's front panel, you already saw the free space input port. It's cage compatible. And we can also uh, activate an alignment laser, a red laser that helps you align your optical system so that you get optimal uh, beam path or optimal angle into the instrument. We also have a fiber input that's already aligned. You can simply plug in play and, and start measuring. Also on the front panel, we have a reference output, the reference laser that I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the demo, the one that keeps track of the moving stage. That is a 1532 nanometer frequency locked laser. And it's actually a standalone product, uh, this LLD 5030 that I have here on the shelf. You can, you can buy that separately. It's also included in the instrument and you can access it by this output. With this, you can do calibration uh, of the instrument at will, or if you have other uses for the frequency lock laser, please feel free to go ahead. Moving on to the back side of the instrument, we have a couple of connectors, USB for data transfer. We have BNC connectors for external triggering. And we also have a couple of gas connectors uh, in case you want to vent or purge the interferometer box, if, in case you have uh, measurements that are sensitive to atmospheric gases. The GUI that is included, we have a lot of uh, features. Uh, I just want to point out a few. This is the instrument menu, which is the first menu that you will see when you open up the software. We have, of course, uh, measurement start, you can either do a single sweep or you can do repeated continuous measurements. We have a pulsed sources special process uh, in which we can eliminate spectral ghosts that can occur for uh, pulsed sources with lower rep rates. We have a free space alignment dialog. And in this dialog, you can activate or deactivate the alignment laser and also check the detector signals real time so you can get instant feedback while aligning your optical system. And then we have wavelength calibration that you can use then to calibrate your device. Clicking that button will open up this dialog which will guide you through the entire process which is very simple. You just hook up a fiber between the reference output and the fiber input, you start and then everything is automatic. I also mentioned the analysis tools. I want to highlight one of them. It's the peak track, a very uh, versatile tool. It's also a, a valley track tool if you just invert the spectrum. Uh, when you click the peak track or the valley track, it will automatically determine a good threshold, a good wavelength range. It will mark the peaks or the valleys, and it will uh, populate a data table with information about the peaks or the valleys. And now it's time, finally, for the live experiment. For this, I will share my screen. I have started the GUI. So this is what it will look like when you start the GUI. And the first thing that we want to do is to collect a background spectrum. 
So I start measuring in, con in repeat mode, continuous measurements. And this is now the spectrum of the SLS-203, the red lamp that we have here. I, to get a background trace, I will average five traces, and then I will say uh, set it to stop. I'm, that means I will fix that spectrum so it won't update anymore. So that will be our background trace for the duration of the experiment. And then I will start another trace as a sample trace. That will be just right, meaning it will update with every new data acquisition. And finally, I want to have the transmission spectrum. So I go to the Calculate submenu and then Transmission. And that will give you a transmission spectrum with B as a sample and A as a background. I'm going to move that trace over to the secondary y-axis so that we can see both the sample and background trace and the transmission spectrum at the same time. And as you can see right now, nothing really is happening. We have 100% transmission because we haven't done anything yet. We have an equal sample and background trace. Now, I'm going to do something right now. I'm going to start an autosave feature. So this is a feature that we have that can save every new acquisition into a file. And you can use that for later analysis. So in this case, I want to save spectrum trace C. That will be the transmission spectrum. Right, so now that's started. Now we can start our experiment. So I have a plastic tube that's connected to the multipass gas cell. And if I blow air into that, maybe we can get some carbon dioxide in there. We already see that something is happening. We get absorption features in our blue spectrum. Actually, it helped me hide the other traces and only show the transmission spectrum. We see that we have basically uh, three regions of absorption. We have one at 4.6, very strong. We're absolutely saturated. We have 100% transmission. Oh, sorry. 0% transmission, 100% absorption. And we also have a region at 2.6 micrometer that's intermixed with water a bit. And also another feature here at 2 micron. It's smaller, but it's perfect for us, for us because it's not saturated and it's not intermixed with other species. In case uh, you don't believe me that it is carbon dioxide. Let's check with the Hytron database. Hytron database is a source of many transmission absorption spectra. You can load that uh, data into our GUI via the references dialog. We simply select carbon dioxide, load as trace. We want to move that as well over to the secondary y-axis. And then we can check this 2 micron absorption feature and see if our experiment matches with the whoops matches with the theory and yes i would say we have a very good match it is carbon dioxide very good we can also do some analysis we can bring up the value track tool that i briefly discussed earlier I simply click the value track tool. It automatically detects a good threshold and range. And you can see every valley is already marked. We get uh, data in our data table. We can right click to copy either a line or the whole data table into the clipboard if you want to do analysis elsewhere. And then finally, I want to do something with that autosave that we started earlier. If we go to File and then Replay, we can replay the entire experiment again. So I'm going to select 
the directory where I put the autosave files. I'm going to start automatic loading. I'm going to maybe play back a bit faster. You can see at, in the beginning, we have 100% transmission. And then as I blow, we get the absorption features. And now it's looping continuously. So that's why you see it happening several times in a row. It's a handy feature. If you forgot to analyze something, you can just run the experiment again. Sometimes, perhaps, you want to do a little script of your own. We have a software development kit that supports uh, LabVIEW, C, C++, C Sharp, and Python. So you can write your own script, and you can access all the features that we use in our GUI. Uh, in fact, let me show you a small Python example that I made. So again, I will share my screen. It's my Python interpreter with a very small example. Uh, it's just connecting to the instrument. It's setting a few acquisition settings, such as resolution and sensitivity, appetization. I ask the device to give me a spectrum. And then when the spectrum is ready, uh, I will plot it in a, in a Python window. Uh, just like that. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and for sticking with me. And I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Um, thank you so much, Carl, for the very informative and interesting presentation. And we have already received some questions, but please go ahead and submit any further questions you might have. Uh, so we go to the first question. Um, Carl, how often do you need to perform a wavelength uh, calibration? Well, uh, we don't actually... Um foresee that you need to calibrate the wavelength very often. Uh, you could do it once a year uh, just to keep everything in place. Or after a transportation, that would be a good time. Uh, otherwise, we don't really uh, foresee that you need to do it very often. The system is, of course, stable. But you can do it at will, uh, wh however much you want to do it. Uh, thank you. And then we go to the next question. Can you borrow a demo unit? Yes, yes, of course you can. Thor Labs has a very generous loan program for all of our, our OSAs. So you can borrow an OSA 200 or a Redstone uh, for a period of two weeks to evaluate and see if it works well with your uh, intended experiment or application. And if you're interested in doing that, just Click the Contact Us widget, uh, I think, to your left and towards the bottom. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and then the next question was, uh, can I download, download the software and try it out? Uh, yes, you can. The software is free. There's no license. Uh, you can download the software from our web page. Uh, and you can try it out, even if you don't have an instrument. We have virtual instruments that are included uh, with the software. So you can uh, download it and try it out with a virtual uh, instrument. We have different sources. You can try maybe a laser or a fabric parole laser or a superluminescent diode or, or something like that. And you can play around and see uh, the different features, how they work, definitely. Yes, thank you. And then you mentioned a special process for measuring pulse sources. And what did you mean by that? Right, yeah, good question. So uh, the pulsed sources, as, uh, since the Michelson interferometer uh, needs a, a bit of time to measure as the retro reflector moves along the stage, this time can be from a half a second up to maybe a minute. And since a pulsed source is changing and turning on and off during that time, 
uh, you can get what we call spectral ghosts. They appear as peaks in the spectrum, but they're not real peaks. They're just uh, phenomena that occur due to uh, sampling. And this occurs for pulsed sources that are, uh, have a fairly low repetition rate frequency. So uh, for a redstone, maybe it's about, I know, it's about 7 kilohertz. Uh, if you're above 7 kilohertz, then it's fine. Then you don't have to worry about that. Um, and uh, the special operation then, if you are below this limit, it takes different measurements with different speeds, and it uh, uh, cancels out the spectral ghosts that you see. Yes, thank you. And um, then there was one more question, the last question we had here. Uh, what kind of pulsed sources can the redstone measure? Thank you. That, uh, also a good question. We have a lot of customers with pulsed sources. And I would say that the most important characteristic of a pulsed source to determine whether or not we can measure it with the redstone OSA is this repetition rate. If your repetition rate is above seven kilohertz, actually, in fact, down to maybe one kilohertz, if your wavelength is right, uh, then there is no problems. If it's below, then you need, may need to make sure uh, that this pul uh, special pulsed mode operation works. Maybe you should just contact us to make sure that uh, your application will work, or you can borrow a unit to try it out for yourself. Thank you, Carl. And yes, um, this was all we had for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending today's webinar. And uh, special thanks to Carl Borg and Toon for the presentation on our uh, Redstone Optical Spectrum Analyzer. Um, if you would like to schedule some time with us, uh, please use our Request Now tool. And if you would like to have a demo of the Redstone, please click on the contact form below. Thank you again for joining today's seminar and webinar.